we are looking at as the third spiritual channel for accessing the will of God, the mind of God, but then I will focus on the voice of God. Mm. Give us understanding, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Psalm 68. Please open your spirit. I believe that what you will hear tonight will really, really bless you. Psalm 68 and verse 33. Read with me, please, if you are a believer. One, two, read. To him that rideth upon the heavens of heavens, which were of old, lo, he doth send out his voice, and a mighty voice. So the Bible tells us God can send his voice, not just his word, his voice can also be sent to a man. John said, I am the voice, not I have a voice. I am the voice of one crying. So a voice can be personified. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 8. The Bible speaking says, And they had the voice of the Lord. Please read with me. And they had the voice of the Lord God. What was the voice doing? Talk to me. Ah! And they had the voice of the Lord walking in the garden. Not they had the Lord. They had the voice like a person sent walking to communicate with someone else. Are we together? And they had the voice. They had it, but the voice had legs. It was walking. When you, this, is, this is a powerful revelation that I want to show you. Because in addition to understanding God's character, in addition to righteousness, peace, and joy, one of the greatest advantages, let me tell you the truth, that can happen to a believer is to know the voice of God. You will pay for it again and again and again and again and again if you lack capacity to hear the voice of God. It's one of the mysteries of the presence of the Holy Spirit in a believer. And it had the voice of God walking in the cool of the day. One of the advantages of the presence of the Holy Spirit in the believer, among other things, the Bible says, I have many things to tell you now, but you cannot bear them. He said, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come? The Bible says he will guide you into all truth, not some. There is a body of truth allocated for your understanding. And it is the ministry of the Holy Spirit to guide a believer. Guide a believer. Navigate you through the path that leads you to that understanding. Are we together? And then the Bible says that he will teach you all things. How many things? He will teach you all things. And so, the Holy Spirit, if he is a teacher, then there must be a system of hearing him. Are we together? Please talk to me. You, 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 cannot, you cannot really understand what a man is saying as a teacher if you cannot hear him. Are we together? Yes. When a teacher talks, he says, listen to me. That means you have to pay attention. That means your ears will be used. And the Bible says, he that has an ear. That means for you to hear the Holy Spirit, there is a kind of ear you must have. Not everybody has that kind of ear. He says, he that has an ear, let him hear. That ear is not at the side of your face. That ear is in your spirit. It says, he that hath an ear, please listen very carefully, let him hear. If everyone had it, then the Bible would not need to say, he that hath an ear. That means something can happen to a believer. Remember I said, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. Something was done to my sheep that can cause them to hear my voice. Hallelujah. The voice of God. Now, generally speaking, the voice of God does not necessarily, having just established a few things about the voice of God, the voice of God does not necessarily mean the speakings of God. The voice of God um, is, is used generically as voice, but there are many dimensions to it. The speakings of God is just an aspect of the voice of God. The goal of the voice of God is to transfer the thoughts and the intents of God into the spirit and then the mind of a believer. Are we together now? So, it, it is not limited to his speaking. I'll give you an example. Um, 
If I ask you, buy me McLean, you understand what I'm saying? It doesn't necessarily mean the, tooth, the toothpaste brand McLean. But for some reason, either because of use or whatever, it has been selected to represent. If I say, buy me Maggi, you can even say which one. Are we together now? So when the Bible says the voice of God, he is only capturing a dimension that helps the man he's speaking to to relate with what he's saying. But that the voice of God is not limited to his speakings alone. Are we together? Hmm. It's generally referred to as the voice of God. The voice of God refers to every spiritual means of communicating the thoughts of God to a believer. It's called the voice of God. Every spiritual avenue, every spiritual system designed by the wisdom of God to convey his intent per time per season to the believer is called the voice of God. Because you see, the entire goal of hearing God is to be able to receive that which He intends for you. I used, I think it was Pastor Shegu, or I can't remember who I used yesterday for an example. Let me just use two people again. And um, okay, you can come, sir. And any other person, pastors, you can just let's let's have the protocol. Okay, watch this. Please, that gentleman, just face me. Look at me. Now, do whatever you think. I'm, I'm going to just ask something, and I'll give you the mic to say what you think I said. Okay? What do you think I said? That I should jump. What do you think I said? You said you should jump. You see that? Now, this one can say, I said you should rise up. Another person said you should jump. The most important thing is the thoughts reached. Whether the, 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 the linguistic expression is just a product of the mind and your personal orientation. But the most important thing is that they got the thoughts. If I now do it this way, I'm, don't, don't do it, I'm just an example. If I do this way, he can say, I said, sit down. This one can say, sit on the floor. So in the interpretation, it will look like God said, sit on the floor. God does not speak English. His language is light. Listen, listen, understand this. The language of God is light. The language of God is not Greek, it's not Hebrew, it's not English, it's not Hausa. There's nowhere. It always looks according to the... You remember the Bible says holy men wrote as they were inspired. Meaning that their minds were active in the writing of scripture. But the Bible says the entrance of thy word, what does it give? Talk to me. Light. The language of God is light. In that light is the essence of his communication. Um, if you have a phone, just lift it up and put it down. Okay, watch this. Pastor Shegu, have you seen a situation where I send you a message? I'm typing something on my phone now. I'm seeing what I'm sending. The moment I press send, I don't see it again. It leaks into the realm of the spirit. This is technology now. And then find the exact phone because I attach a number to it and then it gets to that phone. But in your phone is a mechanism to interpret what was sent so that you will understand. There are times that you can receive something in your phone that does not have the capacity to interpret. It will do its best to conjure whatever it can put together in an attempt to communicate what was sent. Remember those early phones. You can send an MMS and it will just interpret it as rubbish. It's not rubbish. It's doing its best to help you see. You, when you upgrade the phone, the message becomes clear. Are we together now? Thank you, guys. The language of God is not English. Your mind has been educated to understand English. The language of God is not Greek. It's not Hebrews. Ah, but the other day, God told me, stand not wrong. But then you are wrong based on this teaching too. Are we together? You are not wrong in that your, your mind, the level of intelligence and the level of orientation in your mind is the instrument that God will use to interpret that essence of light. So the Bible says the entrance of thy word giveth light. That's the voice of God to you. But the challenge now is that a renewed mind needs to participate with that light to create understanding. Are we blessed? So the voice of God is not just limited to his speakings. The voice of God refers 
to every spiritual channel that he employs to communicate his thoughts and his intent to the believer. And we are going to explore three of them very quickly. Number one, the witness of the Spirit. Romans chapter 8 and verse 16. Please pay attention. Let's be sensitive tonight. I believe that we are not only teaching like Pastor said. I believe that even in this God is going to be activating these things because God wants to bring us to a higher level of spiritual understanding and then not just to have the understanding but to have the requisite level of grace to defend that knowledge that we have. Are we together? Romans chapter 8 and verse 16. Please read with me. One, two, read. Beareth witness that we are the children of God. Now, he's just speaking with respect to redemption, but it's not just limited to redemption. He's explaining and revealing a character, one of the ministries of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer, that the Holy Spirit can bear witness. There is something the Spirit of God can do to his, the spirit of man. You, you, witness has to do with validation, confirmation. Are we together? When we say you are a witness, you are a validator of a point. You are a validator of a truth. And the Bible says the Spirit himself, that he bears witness with our spirits, that we are the children of God. That means the Spirit of God can bear witness with my spirit that this is the will of God. The Spirit can bear witness. The witness of the Spirit is... Um, it's a dimension of spiritual operation that the carnal man cannot understand because your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit must be heightened and alive to understand this. You see, not every spiritual thing has a physical equivalent. So it's very difficult to talk to the carnal man. Are we together? Because the, the system of interpreting it, creating a physical parallel to it, may not be there. One of it is the witness of the spirit. The witness of the Spirit. Great men like Kenneth E. Hagin will call it the knowing of the Spirit. The fortitude to know. A persuasion that cannot be explained. That you know. I can know there is danger. Are we together? I can know this is the will of God for me. I can know I should be here. I can know I should not be there. Lord, do I do this? And then the witness of the Spirit comes. Usually... The witness of the Spirit works alongside all these other channels. You see, let me tell you, depending on the level and the gravity of what you want to do relative to God's purpose for you, He will employ multiple channels because you will need a stronger level of certainty. The kind of conviction you will get to choose the clothes that you wear is not the kind of conviction you will get to start ministry. No! They don't play the same role to your destiny and ultimately God's will. So he will employ the... It is within his predeterminate counsel to select at any given time. And also dependent on your level of yieldedness. For Joseph, he used a dream. You see, these dreams you see... Um, I know that dreams today have been hijacked and corrupted, but for God to use a dream to preserve Jesus, that means that these dreams and visions that we have, it's not ordinary. It's an advantage that was given by God to men to order their lives. Are we together? It was Joseph that had a dream. He saw the sun, the moon, 11 stars bowing to him. It was a representation of his destiny. Say the witness of the Spirit. If you experience this dimension of the ministry and the leading of the Spirit, is proof, listen very carefully, is proof that your spirit has been built. You see, there is a threshold level that the spirit of man must be built to receive this kind of seed. Are we together now? And so if you are not spiritually matured enough, in his mercy, he will employ whatever means that can reach you. But sometimes the, the, the direction you are looking for requires a superior level of conviction because of the challenges that stand before you. Hence the need to upgrade your spirit so that God has greater tools to communicate through every way. He can use a dream, then a witness in your spirit, then peace again, then his word, and you are unmovable. Whatever stands before you, the channels are too many to cause you to doubt. 
Are we together now? If I ask the Lord, should I eat rice or beans? The wisdom of the word will answer me straight to the point. Are we together? That is God speaking. But the wisdom that is apostles. Are we together now? Yes. You are not going to hear a voice from heaven eat beans. No. That's, that's, that's a wasted project. God doesn't have that kind of time. I mean, why then did he give, did he give the word? Are we together? But now... You are about to start a ministry. The destinies of millions are part of it. Their own call is in your call. No, God is not just going to use one careless dream and end there. There will be multiple channels because your convictions have to be strong. Believers one day will tell you you are wrong. You will need to go back to the archives of the multiple channels. On the strength of the voice of God, you can stand. With two members, after four years, to say, God still sent me. I know. I know. But I know whom I believe. And I am, help me, that's the word I'm looking for. Persuaded. You don't get persuaded just, no, 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 no. There is something that must happen to a man to persuade him. Unbendable, unmovable. Hallelujah. Say after me the witness of the Spirit. The key to accepting this dimension of the witness of the Spirit is praying in the Spirit. Listen very carefully. This is not a Pentecostal phenomenon for people who are charismatic. No. It's an advantage. It's an advantage. It's one of the hidden wisdom of God. That the princes of this world did not know. The Bible says. Are we together now? Yes. It said that we speak this mystery. This wisdom in a mystery. Praying in the Holy Ghost. It says, but ye... Um, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, First Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 2, he said, he speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Are we together? And then verse 4 says, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, edifieth. Edifieth. You've heard it again and again. Your pastor has graciously blessed the body of Christ with a book that has brought clarity over that subject. Edifieth himself. When you pray in tongues, many things happen. It's important to understand the many things that happen. We're going to explore some of them. I don't want to go ahead of myself. But one of the things that happens to a believer when he prays in tongues, that's why you should pray in tongues as often as possible. Are we together? That your organs of interacting with the realm of the spirit is activated and then heightened so that you can pick spiritual signals with razor sharp accuracy. Praying in the spirit has a way of of causing your spirit to rise above the limitations of the flesh. And you can hear. And you can discern. The Bible says there is as it were many voices. And it says none of them is without significance. When you continually pray in the spirit. You will rise to a point where you will hear a voice like God. But no this is not God. Your spirit has been alive. The signal is strong. Remember that you can tap. I, I don't know what radio stations are around. But have you been at a place where you are just at the boundary of that state. And you are hearing. But it's, it's not really very clear. Are we together? Sometimes you can shift just a few meters and then it's back. So, your, your praying in the spirit is like shifting you in the realm of the spirit. That conformity is happening again and again. Are we together now? The witness of the spirit. There are many people who have been saved from death because of the witness of the spirit. There are many people who have been directed aright because of the witness of the spirit. The spirit himself bears witness with my spirit that I'm in the will of God. Because you see, it's not every time you are going to hear go. There are times you will start moving and if it's God, you will say stop. It's not always go. The witness of the Spirit can supply that strength, that confirmation. You will need it in ministry. You will need it in life. Are we together? Yes. Especially when results have not yet started manifesting. You know, when results are manifesting, they can, they can encourage you. They can support your conviction. But before then, among the various channels is the witness of the Spirit. The Spirit himself can bear witness with my spirit that this is my pastor. 
the spirit himself can bear witness with my spirit that this is my church. The spirit himself can bear witness that I should be in Zaria at this point. Are we together? The witness of the spirit is very strange because a carnal man will not understand. If you tell him a dream and he listens, he can interpret the dream from the lens of his orientation and say, ah, it makes sense. But how do you explain to someone you are having the witness of the spirit? There is no physical way of making them aware. Are we together? The witness of the spirit. As I pray in tongues, many things begin to happen to me. Among them this, the witness of the spirit. It's similar to discernment, but it's not exactly discernment. We are going to go to discernment, and you'll learn a lot here. The witness of the Spirit. He can... What is your fragrance? What are you saying now? We love your precepts. What is your fragrance? What are you saying now? We love your presence. We love your precepts. What is your fragrance? What are you saying now? Jesus, we love your presence. We love your precepts. What is your fragrance? What are you saying now? Hmm. Listen to me. Listen. There are certain things that you can only reveal to men that are intimate with you. It's not as if people don't want to communicate stuff to you, but they can't trust you. How much can God trust you? What he reveals to you the voice you hear, the layer, is dependent on how much he can trust you. And trust begins to expand and increase when you have been brought into places in intimacy. See, God doesn't have favorites, but he has intimates. These are men that have vowed to his presence, vowed to his ways. Their days are yielded to him. You live day to day for God. His intimacy. These men know that they can trust themselves. That they are bound by covenant. That they, they can't turn their back tomorrow. There are certain things God can reveal to you. Why did you think that Moses was killed the way he was killed? In my own opinion, it was because Moses has been brought to a place where he can. There are certain things he has seen. When you come into that place, you cannot come and be doing another thing. Moses has seen too much. That's why he has to die. He has to die because Moses has become a physical representation of God's dimension. As far as the Israelites are concerned, that man has calcified the mode, the voice, the dimensions of God. That was why by the time we came to the New Testament, the scripture said that this, the whole, the entirety of the law is called Moses. And as long as Moses spoke, the veil was there. What kind of man was Moses? When the angels and power came and the glory, the cloud descended, Moses said, Show me your glory. I want to know you. It's for intimates, Nena. How much do you know the Lord? Let me show you where my brother stopped. First Samuel. Be playing this, don't reduce it, my friend. First Samuel chapter 3 and verse 7. Quickly. First Samuel chapter 3 verse 7. Oh, there is something hanging, hanging here. There is something hanging. There is something hanging. I tell you what I found out. And for years now, I've not missed God for once.
I have, ne- I have not missed him for years. I have not. There are days everywhere is dark. And I'm not trying to use myself as an example. I want to show you from the scripture that after this teaching, if you will heed the instructions, the education that came back, you will live, you will live as uh, you will live like the mortars on the earth. The voice of God will be your living bread. Every day you woke, you wake up as if as if um the all the things in the earth is working for your favor because you have found yourself in such a place that the voice of God has become your sustenance and if it is true every resource rallies up to help you to achieve the agenda the mandate the instruction that came from the voice because every creature rallies around to fulfill the word of God that came out the Bible says that the word of God will never come to him void without fulfilling the purpose so when we extract the voice from the word and stay there what do you think God will do for you? when I found this out God tested my heart for five years he wanted to know if I will I will seek his voice for five years he hid the matter from me if you are the one after six months you say God God have not said anything God have not and you 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 take off many times when God wants to seek wants to wants you to seek him concerning a matter so that his voice will come the first stage of that journey is to test your heart is to see if you are willing to come in into him because his desire is to draw you to intimacy many of the information you seek is not on the street the day wisdom start crying on the street then there is problem what is wrong with us today verse 7 first Samuel chapter 3 verse 7 the bible says now Samuel did not yet know the Lord why he said neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him you see it the knowledge comes when the voice begins to come that is when God begins to reveal his dimensions to you there are many things I want to tell you as I told you people we are looking at the purposes of the voice and in the first stage we said that the voice comes to instruct there is a second purpose and the second purpose is that the voice comes to teach yes that was why the scripture is speaking in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 21 I, how I just wish this thing will be on so that I, I don't want to break my flow the Bible said in verse 20 that ye have so learned Christ and in that place the Bible is saying that there is a certain kind of education that comes when God begins to speak to you are you with me now the Bible now went back if you trace that kind of education the Bible now went back to the book of Genesis chapter 17 verse 1 the Bible was saying there that that Abraham was 90 years old 90 years old 90 year old man and the voice of God came to him and said Abraham walk ye before me and be a perfect I was shocked so what has Abraham been doing since the voice came to teach him perfection it was there that we realized that the voice come to teach men I said I entered this year after 10 years of prayer ministry the Lord called me and said come let me teach you prayer I said what have I been doing it was then that I realized when men pray they don't pray because they say you should pray the way we pray here is a proof that there is a spiritual education that brings the dimension no matter the territory anywhere we appear we crack it there is an education that has entered our spirit anywhere we enter we know the key we have been taught in the spirit God told me come let me teach you prayer I said the voice can teach men what have you been taught what have you heard the Bible said ye have not so learned Christ see listen to me when you begin to get intimate with god then he will begin to teach you and if it is true that you have matured in god then you have become a man that has been brought into regions where the voice of god has sounded repeatedly in your life with the intent to teach so that when men see you appear 
and you begin to live a certain kind of life it is because there is an education that came from the voice of god go look at the destiny of the man called abraham and knew that the covenant and purpose of god that he intends to manifest through his life is large and focused yet the man has not been brought into the regions of the education that he takes so god has to thunder from heaven and say hurry come let me teach you let me teach you the presence so that tomorrow if you carry my can say you are doing worship you know that you are a priest that what a priest has is an altar it's not a stage a priest has what not a stage so when you carry my as a music minister your only audience is the father in heaven if you can get him to come down Akaika. If you know the secret, even if you appear in a shrine and the deity of your village is looking at you face to face, you know the technology to draw down the presence of God. Because you have been taught. Because have, have you been taught? I think you need to pray for 30 seconds. <laughs> Let your voice come to teach me. I don't want to be ignorant. I don't want to be foolish. Let your voice come. Let your voice come. For how long will you continue like this? Let me tell you, your destiny will never be fulfilled if you continue to live the way you are living. Even though you are carrying the covenant, even though God said he will use you in mighty ways, but there is an education that comes via the voice the Bible says and the Lord Abraham not Noah 17 verse 1 and the Lord told Abraham when he was 90 years old he said walk here before me and be perfect oh my God walk here before me what is the voice of God demanding from you is he telling you walk here before me and be humble Walk here before me and be disciplined. Walk here before me. Haya! Sayan pakatia hasta de belekua tadaria. Oh my God! Simai efeteria para sasambe kumerete sabile tamandre. Second purpose is what? So when you see men that have been taught well in the ways of God, it's a proof that they are custodians. The custodians of the voice of God. Yes. It means that their heart is, um, is a tabernacle where the oracles of God sounds. The oracles of God. many things have the voice of God taught you? What have you learned of Christ? What do you know? As a matter of fact, when God wants to teach you something that will bring um, you to new frontiers, some of the things you cry for, what you need is just a voice to come. When it comes, it will bring an education. 
by the time you are through it will not just bring you to the place that you seek it, it, it will make you a custodian so that you will become somebody that teach men the same things you know why many people don't hear God they don't want to be close to God enough and God has refused to speak to non-covenant men you don't want covenant God can't speak to you at a certain level so they want to live a, they want to live anyhow and then when things be, comes to an, an head in your life then you start crying oh God speak to me speak to me but there are men that have lived for God so much so that a time came they, they never asked God to speak on matters God is busy sharing it just like husband and wife shares it you will come in the evening when you are back from work you say honey do you know what happened today hey in our office there is one woman that woman she bought a new hair ate it out who, who needs that kind of information i say you don't know what intimacy can do to god he will share secrets of things that will yet happen in 50 years the time has not yet come but he, you, you are, are you with me that's how men like priorities that's how they prophesy i know you called him a prophet me i call him an intimate he has he has aligned to the heart of god so much that when he steps his feet on this land he will remove his shoes and begin to prophesy he is not prophesying his prophecy is not the prophecy god he is not predictive his prophecy is the prophecy of patriarchs men like jacob men like abraham isaac the bible said that these men they leaned on staff and they will say come let me tell you what will happen <laughs> what kind of men are these May God show us mercy and bring us to those frontiers. Men like Isaac will come. Let me tell you what will happen about your life. They speak as patriarchs. That is why well, what they spoke, you can't overturn it. The days that Moses overturned the one that was on the life of Reuben, the Bible said that on that day he was a king. That's the only way you can change the utterance of patriarchs. You have to sit as a king. And on that day, elders will sit with you it was when the elders of israel sat then then moses became king over them and then he spoke and he was able to change the utterance of the patriarchs because what you call prophecies in their own context the word that came from them is not just to reveal the word that came from them is not to predict the word that came from them is to create because that was the first revelation of the the, the purpose of the prophetic word he said come let me tell you what will happen in the end so the destiny of a generation is configured is is manipulated is configured is is um is redressed channeled by the utterance of a man he said come let me tell you what will happen at the end ever conceived the only action the father does is speak because the kingdom runs on the strength of authority he rules by authority and if the authority of god is not exercised it means god cannot accomplish his divine purpose you get that that's why he couldn't accomplish his divine purpose in your life when you were a non-believer because he had no jurisdiction for such authority that was needed to drive your life in the direction of his will and so in this meeting, because God happens to be a prophetic God. Is that true? But the Bible says that he speaks the end from where? That's his nature. Right? So if he speaks, it is always done. Just like he said, let there be light. And then experientially, there was light. Now, see the way the mortars speak. They don't speak. We are waiting for light to come. Oh. Okay, light is coming. Light is coming. No. Once he has spoken, it is his comments are registered in the past tense. Um, when the father says, I want Chooks to be on the earth. The Holy Spirit is the secretary. And Chooks came on the face of the you understand that kind of that's the reporting system okay um oh 
man has sinned and the only basis upon which he can find redemption is that the son of man must be slain what the Holy Spirit writes in the edition is the son of man slain since the foundation of the world because that's when that meeting was held huh? are you you are, you are operating in time. They are operating in time. You, are, you understand? It's, they, are, they are two different frames of reference. I'm just trying to make you think about the way God thinks. Because you are thinking of your poverty. But <laughs> thinking of your... It's, meanwhile, you are not with me. <laughs> thinking of your challenges. Thinking of, but it's not God that created those challenges. In the midst of the challenges, if you can hear God, he's, not, he's talking about... A, a, a time beyond this challenge. Are you there? So, because it is past tense, according to immortal language, salvation was a possibility for anybody that could believe God for it, even before Jesus came to the cross. That's how Abraham, the truth about Abraham was that he found salvation. And yes, that is what is written in the book of Romans chapter 4. Abraham, in his dealings, now found that our salvation was available because the Lamb of God was, according to the minutes of the meeting, was already slain from the time of the meeting, which was before the foundation of the world. So he had already seen, God had already seen that Adam was seen. God had already, you know, he knows it's the end. He knows it from the beginning. He had already programmed, are you with me? That Jesus was going to be slain. And in the realm of the immortals, it was captured that he was slain already. Since the time that thing took place in eternity, it became past tense for them. Meaning that salvation was actually accessible. The mystery of Abraham was that he was able to stumble into that judicial and organic framework so Abraham was the example of a saved man. Are you with me? So it was, it was easy for Abraham to hear God because God dwelt in him. You want me to prove that? I've done it before here. Okay. That's why I didn't want to go into this this talk because it will take time and it will, it will take me away from my lecture. Okay, um, Romans chapter 4. I know you don't believe it, but it looks. You will need to take time to study your Bible to hear God speak. Uh, Romans chapter 4, verse 1 says, What shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, has found? There was something that Paul obviously knew that Abraham had found, and Romans chapter 4 was like a. a, a, a a, a research proposal a research proposal that will be the basis upon which some research will be done and uh, the proposal is we need to find out what Abraham found are you there? next verse if Abraham were justified by work so you need to underline the word justified it means Abraham was justified what does it mean to be justified? To be declared righteous. So, uh, just like you were declared righteous, Abraham found something in the spirit. And on the strength of what he found, he was declared righteous. And the Bible is saying that he was not justified by works. Because if he was justified by works, he would have had an opportunity to glory before God. So Abraham was justified because of something he found. Next verse. For what said the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was logically calculated as righteousness. That's how it's read in the Greek. So it means Abraham stumbled into salvation by faith. He believed God. The same way you stumbled into it. Abraham was declared righteous. You see. And righteousness could not be furnished by the law. And Abraham operated way, way, way before the law came. Because he was plugging into the possibilities 
that was factored into the fact that the Lamb of God was crucified before the foundation of the world. I don't have time to build this. I don't have time to build this. This is what made him a colossus. This is what made him have the three titles he had. The title of the friend of God, the father of faith, and the father of many nations. He was ahead of his time because he found something. It means that there's something in God that you can find that can make you ahead of your time. It, it, this is not the lecture. This is not the class. The class when I want to make you think the thoughts of God. We'll use some scripture to generate some thoughts. You, it will be as if your brain wants to crash. The reason why you have that experience is because it's only the Holy Spirit that can that can that can bring you into the thoughts of God. If you try to do it in the flesh, it will not count. It will not be able to. Don't worry. We'll do that, you see. So the Holy Ghost can bring you into the thoughts of God. This guy found salvation. That salvation was possible. And he experienced justification without Jesus coming physically. Just like the woman that was caught in adultery was able to experience forgiveness before the cross. Hmm? Oh, you are not with me. Do you remember the criminal on the cross? He said, Today you will be with me in paradise. Eh? He was promising the man something. And that promise came before he breathed his last. Because the, the criminal found something. He found something. So the question is. What will you find? It is what I found in the spirit, in God, that has made me who I am. You will need to find something. Every pilgrim must find. Are we there to that point? So I can, it's conv it's, if I leave you on that point now, you know what I'm talking about. So let's move. Are you there? I'm still in John chapter 17. John chapter 17 verse 3. That's where I am now. Please go to John 17 3. And he said, and this, so I just showed you in verse 2, he had authority to give eternal life. In, the, in his capacity of salvation, he had authority to give eternal life. And it was him that Abraham met. And because he had such authority, he didn't tell Abraham you came too early. He gave him life. Abraham found life in the spirit because he has authority to give eternal life to as many as he wills. And this is eternal life, the Bible says, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. This is eternal life, that they might know thee. Eternal life is not everlasting life. Eternal, eternal life is qualitative. Are you here? Everlasting life is quantitative. But this one is qualitative. There is, there, is, there is a quality in that life that makes it possible for you to know God if you have that life. There is a system in that life that will make it possible for you to know God if you have that life that's why jesus equated the holy ghost dwelling with you equals knowing him because the life itself has a system embedded in it that facilitates your knowledge of god in itself so we can go to first john chapter 2 verse 20. first john chapter 2 verse 20. This is John speaking. As John said, Ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Ye have what? This unction is a knowledge faculty, it's the system through which spiritual knowledge is born. 
is part of that which is associated with the life of God that you have received. And so it is through the instrumentality of this unction that the ability to know things lies. You get that? You can know things. You can what? Know things. So since the primary reason for the existence of the unction is to make you know things, then we can therefore conclude that the unction is operational when you begin, when the faculty of knowing opens up. So if I begin to pray in tongues, pray in the spirit for instance, and then suddenly I begin to know things, it's a proof of the fact that the unction is now at work. These things are possible because he dwells in me. Oh man. We have an unction. An unction from the Holy One. So we know all things. <laughs> we know all things. So if by God's grace, if we are blessed of God to continue this teaching, then I need to show you how the unction works. Because the purpose of the unction is to make you know all things. Like she is a doctor in the physics department. There can be a challenge. That unction can make you know physics. Because there's no scope, no extent to which that unction cannot bring knowledge. 